So it's the next day. Mm -hmm. And what are you up to? I am already thinking about dinner tonight and what we're going to have. And we're almost out of bread. And it's kind of a dreary, misty day. So I'm just getting started on some dinner rolls that can take the afternoon to rise while we're traveling. Uh, so we can have fresh buns, uh, maybe with some soup for dinner. Nice. Yeah. And I, I think the challenge of cooking on boats is figuring out how to make kind of smaller batch things, right? So you're not making two dozen dinner rolls because what are you going to do with that? But just, you know, enough. And so, uh, we'll see. I wrote down this recipe before I left and we'll see how it turns out. Well, it looks good already. <laughs> I don't know about that, but... Well, I have to we'll say see. that. You have cause... to say that. So this is the start. And uh, if all goes well, you'll see the finished product at dinner tonight. Nice. And were we woken up to anything different today? Like it was, oh. it, the weather's changed. It the rained weather's... last night. Yep, you oh. woke up in the early morning to some rain that I slept through. Um, but then we were gotten out of bed by... I heard these sounds and it didn't really sound like birds. Um, but we listened closely and popped our heads outside and it was wolves. Um, maybe some babies or some young wolves all kind of mewling and howling. So I imagine that maybe their mom brought them a big fish. Pretty and like pretty cool to hear that. That was really cool. Yeah. And then there's been some loons, the odd seagull. It's a nice so, uh, spot here. Yeah, it's been a nice morning. Yeah. And the reason we're not hurried today is because we're waiting for the tide to peak and start falling because we want to catch the ebb for the northern half of Grenville Channel. And so you're watching the, well, we know what time the tide hits Prince Rupert and Hartley Bay, and you're watching the depth. And so as long as the, you know, the depth of the boat keeps increasing, we know that the tide's still going up in here. Because as soon as it starts to decrease, we know it's our sign to go. Yes. So you're nearing the eight minute mark of kneading. Yep. The dough's all coming together. And so once I'm finished kneading, I will put it into a bit of a greased bowl that I'd have just on the side and cover it up and then I'll let it rise. And once it's kind of doubled in size, you sort of punch it down and make it into some rolls and then you let them rise again in the pan and bake them. And because we're gonna travel, I chose a bowl that is going to sit well in the sink in case we decide to sail. And, and it's else? greased so it doesn't stick it's to the pan. It's greased so it doesn't stick to the pan, so it has all the space to rise. Mm. Um, and if you end up having, like if I've made them too early, I can always let them double a few times because they might. Anyways, they might be doubled before we get to our next place, in which case you just punch it down again and let them rise again. So, hopefully, pretty versatile. Mm. And it's going to smell delicious when they're baking. Usually you cover it with a tea towel. Oh, we're just going to use plastic wrap. And how long will that take to rise? Do you figure a couple hours? Yeah. 
It's um, what you should sort of expect. What you should sort of expect. I mean, it depends on how warm. Like, if you want it to rise faster, you put it in a warm place. So, you know, we might, if we wanted it to rise faster, we'd put it on top of the the cupboard covering the engine because mm. it gets lots of heat in there. Um, you can also use instant yeast instead of just regular yeast. But uh, this will be, you know, in, in about two hours, it should be ready to go. Mm. And we'll beat it down again. <laughs> Sounds good. So we've just hauled the anchor in exposed inlet and we've decided that the tide has just started dropping by the looks of it and we should get a good push going along the north uh, section of Grenville Channel. Just before we get going I'll show you the anchor. So I'd say it's a... Uh, yeah, so that's already had some mud fall off of it, but that's kind of a mud sand mix if you're wondering uh, what that would look like. So good bottom here. And good job hauling the anchor. Thanks. Ready to go? Ready to go. What do you think that blue thing is when we're on the shore? Oh it's a barrel. Oh uh, okay. I was looking at the binoculars. When you see things that aren't natural Not, colored. Yeah, <laughs> It's just a, a, a 50 gallon drum. There used to be a big stump painted out there like a face. I thought oh. That seemed pretty close to, close to the road. Oh. Yeah. Well, I should probably let's, get on the helm, hey? Let's head out. All right. to Lewis Island and I think that uh, I'd rather stay cozy inside right now. I uh, haven't had to put on rain pants for the entire journey and um, it's, uh, it's about seven o'clock so I think that I'll save exploring for another sunny day. And what would be more cozy on a day like this than, than homemade Handmade buns, buns. Uh, and we're gonna wear out some soup. So they've risen nicely and I'm about to pop them in the oven. And by the time they come out of the oven, we'll have um, we'll have soup ready to go. And they look super tasty already. Super tasty already. Fingers crossed, and they will taste as good as they look in about 25 minutes. Smell good too. How's dinner so far? Mm, it's pretty tasty. It's raining outside. The wind's died down. But these buns are super yummy. And they're very hot inside. I can see the steam coming off them. 
This one's not nearly as hot as the first one, which I could barely handle. But, uh, yeah, they're perfect. I have a bowl of chili. And they are perfect for so, dipping in. So is that bun number two? Bun number three. Oh. Maybe. And there's two more in the pan, but I better uh, stop at three. Sir. But they're good. So I just dip it in my chili. I think I'm eating more buns than chili. Today is our last day, and we're not too far from Rupert, so it's not the greatest day because we have to head back and every time I do these trips by the end of it I even the shorter trips I'm thinking how could I do this all the time so it's kind of one of those mixed emotion days where you know you have to end it and get back to the routine of life back to work there's just so much to see on this part of the coast that uh, I wish I could keep doing it full time. But one day, and it's been a good trip. Saw some new places, saw some wildlife, saw some old familiar places, had great weather, good company, and the more I cruise, BC's north coast, the more amazing it gets.
any tips for people thinking about doing a similar trip? Bring lots of food. Um, double your water tank capacity if you can, unless you have a water maker. We went nearly the two weeks with the water capacity I have, which is 65 gallons, or 66 gallons, I should say. Do lots of route planning ahead of time. Pick out your destination, but then pick out uh, a secondary destination as a backup that's maybe halfway, because the weather can turn. Get weather reports when you can because it is spotty up here uh, on the VHF. At least this year it was worse than last year. Bring a good camera because there's lots to see. Sometimes I uh, get like sensory overload, <laughs> like when we went into home bay. Drop the anchor, there's whales bubble net feeding, there's wolves howling on the beach, then there's a wolf on the beach. Then another sailboat comes in and it's just, it's a pretty amazing place to uh, be able to visit. Yeah, and just be prepared for some remote, rugged and beautiful cruising grounds. <laughs>